Welcome to Electron Online and now let's talk about the limitations of a refracting telescope. Remember, refracting telescope was a telescope that used the lens for the objective and we call it a refracting telescope because the rays of light coming through the lens would then refract or bend and come together at the focal point towards the end of the telescope. The problem with a refracting telescope is when you start to build them really large, you end up with a very large lens, and very large lenses become very big and very heavy, and they have to deal with gravity. Gravity pulls down on them, so that's the force due to gravity, and because of that, the lens could actually bend or reshape itself simply under the forces of gravity. Remember, the telescope will be pulled in all kinds of different positions, sometimes straight up, sometimes more at an angle, especially when the telescope goes up at a much higher angle, gravity works on it and starts bending or reshaping that lens. And when the, the lens is reshaped from what it should be, the images become unfocused and blurry and it's no longer very practical. So the biggest telescope, refracting telescope ever built, was built in 1898, more than 100 years ago. It was called the Yerkes Refractor at the Yerkes Laboratory, I can barely pronounce that name, at Williams Bay, Wisconsin. So why is it they didn't build any bigger telescopes after that? Well, the lens was 40 inches of diameter, about 102 centimeters, about a meter, about this big, and it probably weighed several hundred pounds. And because of that, the reshaping from gravity made it impractical to try and even build bigger ones. The bigger the lens, the more gravity would interfere with to be able to keep the shape. And so we didn't try to build bigger telescopes like that after that. We built different kinds of telescopes, taking, um, namely the reflecting telescopes, and we'll talk about those later. Now, who came up with the idea of building the Yerkes refractor? It was Hale. Hale's a very famous astronomer. Matter of fact, the observatory on Palomar in California was named after him. That's called the Hale Telescope. He lived from 1868 to 1938. In the 1940s, they built that humongous telescope that was the biggest and best in the world at the time in the 1940s and named it after him. He hired someone named Alvin Clark, who was a master optician. He was really able to take a lens that big and shape it just perfectly in the parabolic shape that it needs to be in order to cause that lens to act the way it needs to, needs to act. So there was a, a lot of craftsmanship that used to go into being able to build these kind of lenses, and so it was done by someone named Alvin Clark. But that was the last big hooray for refracting telescopes. After that, we didn't build any big ones like that anymore. Refracting telescopes are still practical for smaller telescopes, although it is so much easier to build objective mirrors rather than objective lenses that it's kind of a, a passe. We don't use this, con uh, this concept of telescopes much anymore. And if you want to know what it looks like, the new telescopes, then come and look at the next videos and we'll show you what refracting telescopes look like and what the benefits of those refracting telescopes are. That's what we mean by refracting telescopes.